Hello again, this is Steve Stein from Guitar Zoom. Just wanted to say thank you so much for all of the questions and the comments that have been coming in. Um, it's awesome that we can have this conversation about rhythm, about groove, how important it is to our playing. Um, and so I want to remind you to let me know if you've got any questions or comments, please post them, and I'm going to get to them as quickly as possible. Um, I have one in particular. Before I move on to the new palm muting concept, uh, the technique I want to talk about in, in learning how to strum versus palm mute, putting those together and kind of merging them so they're nice and tight. Now we're moving into rock and metal a little bit here, although we can certainly use it in blues and different things as well. But there were a couple of questions that I wanted to address. One of the big questions I had from uh, the second video that I did, where I was kind of culminating everything and putting it together, um, one person had a, uh, had a question, his name is Dave, and thank you Dave for contacting me uh, and letting me know your your issues. I'm always here to help, and I'm glad to, to be of service. Um, but his big question was, well, how do you really deaden those things out? If you're trying to play, you know, his big question was, he keeps getting sound from everything. And, and again, logically, we know if we're pressing on a string, we're going to get it to vibrate, and if we're touching the strings like when we're scratching, we're going to get them to deaden. The confusing part is trying to make both of those things happen at the same time, like with the riff that I did last time. It takes time to learn how to do that. And so Dave, the most important thing is, when you're playing that, that you're not trying to play the entire riff. You're just developing the technique. Okay, because if you try and play the entire riff and it's not really making sense to you, you'll go back to that closed position discussion I was having last time. Now, please don't misunderstand what I'm saying. There's nothing wrong with that. It sounds great that way. There's, it's perfectly fine. But if you want to learn how to implement the funk element into your playing, you've got to learn not so much how fast can you play the riff. And again, I've been teaching my whole life, uh, and uh, I, I'm older than you might think I am. Uh, but the, the, the number one thing that I, I find uh, with, with students when they're learning how to play is they're in such a, a hurry to get to the end of whatever it is that they're doing that they're kind of bypassing all of the, 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 the secret sauce, so to speak, the, the most important elements. Okay, It's not the song. Please always remind yourself that. It's not the riff or the song, whatever it is that you're learning. It's the techniques that go into it. Because if you can learn how to implement and, and apply those techniques, you own them. You own them for the rest of your life. They're yours. The song is just a song. It's one of a billion songs. Um, but the technique that you're using can then be redirected into any other song or any other situation that you're in. So, Dave, when it comes to this thing, you have got to, before you ever worry about playing the whole riff, you have got to learn how to deaden out everything except for that one note on the fifth fret, uh, excuse me, the fifth fret of the fifth string that you're trying to, to get to make sound. So take baby steps, okay? And don't ever, ever, ever feel bad about that. The more you can truly understand the, the topic of conversation or the, the issue that you're having, and you can really wrap your mind around that and start developing that, it's no longer an issue, it goes away. That's, that's the beauty of it. So again, thank you to everybody that's been responding and commenting, and it's just awesome to see people helping other people um, in these pages, so it's, it's, it's great. Um, so what I wanna do today is I wanna show you a really easy but fundamental and essential technique to develop your palm muting. Now, if all you play is strummy, carpenter-style music, you probably won't use pet, you know, palm muting, but if you play anything that's modern, you're going to use it. It doesn't just have to be rock and metal. It's all sorts of different things. But you certainly see it very prominently in rock and metal. So what I want to do is I just want to show you how to do a really easy technique. You don't even need a chord if you don't want to, although I am going to make an E power chord. So I'm going to press on the fifth and fourth strings at the second fret there, and I'm going to strum the top couple of strings. But, I mean, if you wanted to, you could just use one string and you'd be perfectly fine. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take eight beats and I'm gonna palm mute for eight beats, just like this, super easy, just like this. Now remember, I'm taking the karate chop part of my hand, and I'm setting it right where the bridge and the string meet, okay? So I'm setting my palm down right where the string and the bridge meet right there, okay? If I'm too far forward, it's just gonna kill the string. If I'm too far back, 
I'm not going to be touching the string and it's not going to palm mute it. So we want the string to vibrate. We just don't want to vibrate freely. We want it to be restricted. So that's what my palm is doing. I'm not pressing down hard or anything like that. I'm just touching the string. So what I'm going to do as an example for you to find the right spot, I'm going to move back too far and start plucking that six string. And then I'm going to start moving my palm in. So watch what happens. So what I want to do is start kind of honing in on the right spot to be where I'm causing it to vi or to, to uh, palm mute with a vibration, but it's restricted. If I move too far forward, I kill the string. If I move too far back, I'm not vi I'm not I'm not palm muting at all. So here's where it is for me. If I want a little less, I move back just a teeny bit. If I want a little more, move forward a little bit. Right. Those two spots, I want you to explore that just a little bit to find the ideal sound that you're looking for. If I'm playing heavier music, sometimes I'll move forward just a little bit from that spot to tighten things up. If I'm playing something a bit more rock and roll, I might move back a little bit, but that's a huge generalization, right? So we've got our eight palm mutes. Now what I want you to do is simply choose a number between one and eight. Doesn't matter what it is, okay? I'm gonna choose Five, but you could choose anything and practice this. So on the fifth strum or the fifth beat, I'm going to stop palm muting and I'm going to strum, which means by the sixth beat, I need to be back palm muting again. So what I want to learn how to do is to be able to lift that wrist and allow the strum to go through and then set it back down. So I'm not lifting up my whole hand because as I go faster, and I'll show you that in just a second, I can't be moving back and forth like this all the time because it's just it's just lack of, of efficient movement, obviously, right? So, so that's what I have. Now on the fifth one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I'm gonna learn how to release for five, then return by six. This is the key to this whole thing is don't go too fast. Speed is your enemy. Always remember that. Speed is your enemy. Okay? Guitar should never be about being a contest between anybody, ever. Because you know what? You're always going to lose. There's always somebody that's better at whatever. Okay? So, dare to be different. It's not about being better. It's about being different. It's about being unique. You need to be you. Okay? So, right now, we're developing a technique. We're not trying to show off. We're developing a technique. So I, I'm just going to go as fast as I need to, not as fast as I think I should go, right? So I'm going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I want you to notice is when I do my, my, my strum, I'm just really releasing the palm mute and then coming back. Now I'm going to do it a little bit faster not because I'm trying to show off, but because I want you to see the effect when it starts moving into the area where we want it to be. See that? Now, I started off going one, two, three, four, five, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The one I was just doing was on four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Again, the number that you choose makes no difference. It doesn't matter what it is. The point is, is what's going to happen is as you begin practicing, the first stage is getting comfortable with being able to lift and then set it back down to be able to release the palm mute and then enable the palm mute again. That's the first step, right? You're doing that at a nice slow pace, whatever works for you. You've developed, you, you've chosen, excuse me, you've chosen a number, four or five or seven or eight or whatever it is that you're doing, and you're practicing this technique. As it becomes more comfortable, you start learning to just simply kind of lift the back side of that wrist, wrist up just a little bit. Okay, I'm not lifting up the whole hand, I'm just lifting the back side. So all I need to do is lift and then set it back down. That's all the effort I need to shift back and forth. So as it gets faster, I'll do a beat five again, okay? So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. See what I mean? All I'm doing is just lifting it subtly and then setting it back down. If I was to do... 
I'm just I'm causing myself a whole lot of work that I don't need to be doing, okay? So remember, first step is getting comfortable with the palm mute itself. The second part is getting comfortable with being able to lift and then reset. Just lift and reset over and over and over. As that starts happening, you might start developing your speed a bit more. You might explore different beats. Instead of doing beat five, you might do beat three or something like that. But what I want you to be aware of at this stage then is that as you continually do it, somewhere on the line you want to stop counting. This is that groove element again. And you want to start feeling where the strum is, right? So think of it as like when you're, when you're listening to a song and you're going, da 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 You start learning where that dun 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 not because you're counting, but because you can feel where it is. So instead of going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, after a while you want to start feeling where it is. Now that's a little bit harder to do, I believe, when you're going a little slower, but as you as you start speeding that up a little bit, you want to start exploring that. Learn to, again, we talked about in, in the last video, we talked about organic elements. Learning to feel the rhythm, not just counting. We need to count when we need to count. There's nothing wrong with that. But when we can get away from counting, now we can focus on something else. Our brain can't think about 10 things at once. It's just impossible. We try. I try all the time. My wife drives her crazy. But you can really only focus on one thing truly, absolutely at a time. You can try and do a few different things at a time, but chances are most of the time what happens is it all winds up being less than great. It's all happening, you know, you're talking on the phone and trying to write notes and trying to cook chicken or whatever's happening, I don't know. But, but if you could just focus on one thing, it's going to wind up being much more successful. Okay, your output is going to be much more successful depending on what you're putting in, right? So we want to really think about that when we're practicing this. And I should also say, you want to really make sure that, and this is another situation that I have on a regular basis with students, is learning how to truly develop an absolute difference between the sound of the palm mute and the sound of the strum. They shouldn't be kind of 50-50, like you're kind of doing this and this. They should be completely different. See how you can really hear the difference between the two? You don't want it all to sort of be mushed together. Because then you can't really hear anything. You want them to be strikingly different. So when you play, when you hit those strums, it's creating dynamics, just like we talked about with the ocean effect. It's creating a dynamic. People hear that it's an accent. Now again, power chords, all that stuff. They're all things I'm going to be discussing uh, in the Ultimate Guitar Strumming Secrets course that I have coming out. All of these things are in that Ultimate Guitar uh, Strumming Secrets course uh, to the detail. Um, but I just want you to be aware of these as you're practicing uh, and trying to implement those into your playing. So you start off by learning how to palm mute. You find the right spot on your guitar. You know, Les Paul feels different than a Fender. Um, you know, they, they're all a little bit different. You find that, that sweet spot where your palm mute's going to happen. Then you start practicing moving between strumming and palm muting by choosing a number. Once you get that developed, then you want to start trying to develop your speed a little bit, start moving away from counting and move more into that organic element of just creating the strum. Okay? You can feel where the pulse is, where that accent is going to happen. Once you get comfortable with that, you can start moving into doing two numbers, like choose three and six or something like that, and start exploring that element. Once you start really doing that, what's awesome is you start realizing a lot of the rock or metal stuff that you might listen to, um, they do the same thing. That's how, that's how riffs are built, and I, I'm not going to sit and go through a bunch of them, but there's a ton of cool signature famous guitar riffs that do exactly what I'm telling you how to do right now. They just sit around trying to practice. <laughs> Right? So it's pretty awesome. So again, thank you uh, for your time. Thank you for, for the comments down below. I, I always appreciate being able to hear success stories and I, I and equally appreciate hearing when people have situations that we need to help with. Um, so, you know, thank you and, and leave some comments. Practice hard and stay in touch.